What's up YouTube? I'm Hater8 Cowboy. Welcome back to my channel, Hater8 Cowboy Cinema. Today, I wanted to make another video about the HD Fury Diva. Now, I previously made another video on the HD Fury Diva, a very short, brief tutorial on how you can use it to get low latency Dolby Vision on your non Dolby Vision products and displays. But today, I want to make a video and do a live demo to show you how it actually works on a couple of devices. So I'm gonna be using my Xbox Series X, my Apple TV, and my Nvidia Shield. All right, let's get into it. All right, everybody. So I am on my Xbox Series X right now. So I wanna show you how the HD Fury Diva works. So right now, I'm logged into the Fury on my iPad via the web GUI. So it has a it has an on-screen display on the actual device that will show you all the information, but it also has a web user interface that you can use. You can use it on your iPad, you can use it on your iPhone or you know Android tablet, whatever, phone, desktop computer, laptop, basically anything that has a a web a web page you can log into the to the IP address of the Fury Diva and you can find that on the actual Fury Diva itself it'll tell you the IP address so you just go to your computer log in and then you have full access that's gonna be your best bet this is the best way to configure um, if you just stand at the you know wherever your HD Fury Diva is at that's not going to be ideal. It could be in, in another room with your rack. So I really love that they made a web GUI for this. So right now I'm on my Xbox. So as you can see, I've changed the uh, I've changed the the display so that I can show you what it does. So right now on my Diva, I can go to Info and it'll tell me what's actually being input. So I'm getting so the Xbox is telling me my TV supports or my projector supports 4k at 60 Hertz and then it tells me everything that it doesn't support so it doesn't support HDR 10 for gaming it doesn't support Dolby Vision if I go over here it doesn't your TV doesn't support Dolby Vision so it'll tell me for games I can't get Dolby Vision HDR 10 watching movies yeah but watching Movies for W Vision, I can't get that. And then capturing games, I can't get HDR10. So, if I was to go back here, go to 4K TV details. Oops, I'm sorry. Video modes. <clears throat> Excuse me. All of this is grayed out. I can't even access it. I can't turn it on. So here on the Diva, it's showing me 4K60, 420, BT09, 12-bit. So this is the incoming here. And then on the video TX0, it shows me what's actually being output. So as you can see here, I'm, I'm, it's sending a signal of 12-bit, the Xbox, but my projector is only outputting 8-bit. And it's 445 megahertz, 297 megahertz. So that's what it's you know that's the information that you can see now there's also an on-screen display that will display on my TV on my projector and I'll show you that later but I want to go to the edit so here's where you can change your inputs with different presets so the Xbox is on input 0 as you can see here input zero so right now I have it set to 4k 60 444 600 megahertz off sound if I click this drop down and I go all the way up here is where I have all of the low latency Dolby Vision or Dolby Vision or HDR 10 presets that I can just click on and it will change so remember look at it look at the Xbox right now it's telling me I can get 4k but I can't get HDR 10 I can't even go over here and then go back to 4k details so I'm gonna leave it here so I'm gonna change this to I usually keep it on 10 Sony a a1 LODD V 
and you can use any of these any of these should work I just I just always select this one that was the first one I selected that works so I left it there so I'm gonna click this and watch what happens All right, so it's still saying that, right? Oops, I'm sorry. That's the wrong <laughs> that's the wrong input. It should be input 1. Input 0 is my Apple TV. So, that's my fault. Let me go back and change that cuz I changed that one as well. 4K60 444 all sound. Okay, so my Xbox is on input one. So I'm gonna change that to Sony A1, this one number 10. And it still didn't change. So let me go back here. Now it works. I just had to back out. So now you see, boom. I don't I can't get 4K at 120, but now I'm getting HDR10. Now I'm getting getting Dolby Vision for gaming at 4K60. All my movies and now I can capture at 4K and HDR. So Dolby Vision now. I can get it. So let's go back to 4k TV details oops I'm sorry go to video modes and now I can select these so now I'm getting Dolby Vision so if I were to go to let's go to Disney Plus so let me go to something that I know has Dolby Vision <coughs> Okay, so you see the tags at the top, 4K Ultra HD, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. If I change this, I believe that should go away. So let me change this to, wait, let me make sure. So input one, yeah. So input one, let me change this back to, you know what? <clears throat> let me change it to like 1080p or something. So 4K. Okay, 1080p, 444, it's probably going to log me out of Disney Plus. So let me back out. Yep, see, it went away. So that Dolby Vision tag is gone now because I changed it to 1080p so it's not even recognizing Dolby Vision. It's just Dolby Atmos and it's not even HDR10. So I can still get Dolby Atmos, Dolby Atmos, but now it's not saying that I can get Dolby Vision. So let's go back to settings. See, now it's not even, I can't even get 1080p, which is weird. I don't know why it's saying that, but I can't get anything. So let's go back to Disney Plus. So I'm going to back out here, and then I'm going to go back and change this <clears throat> to, I'll even go to a different one, number 8L, Low Latency Dolby Vision. Yep, so it logged me out of, so let's go back in there. Dolby Vision's there now, 4K Ultra HD. So it's it's pretty easy. It's as simple as clicking these presets. I'm not gonna go over these other tabs because you don't really need those to get the Dolby Vision. 
I just want to show you that all you have to do is click a preset and it'll change your settings. So let's go over to my Apple TV. And you can see here it'll change. Okay, so let me hit refresh. So you see it says Microsoft Xbox 4K 60. Let me hit refresh here. Now it says 1080p. So I have this set, my E did, I have this set to 4K 60. So let's go here to, let's go to 4K SDR. <clears throat> so it says your TV, your TV switched to 4K SDR because I have it set that way. So it accepted that. Okay, now let's see what happens when I try to go to 4K HDR. Try HDR. Okay, so I can get 4K HDR. Now, Let's see where Adobe Vision is. So it looks like the option doesn't even come up. And that's because it's not recognizing that I have a Dolby Vision capable display. So I'm just going to switch my input now. So it's telling me that it's on input zero down here. If I go back to EDID and I go to input zero and I go to Sony number 10, low latency Dolby Vision. Okay, boom, 4K Dolby Vision. Now it shows up. 1080p Dolby Vision, didn't know that was a thing. 4K Dolby Vision. So I'm gonna click that and let's see what it says. Apple TV switch your television to use 4K. So I'm getting 4K Dolby Vision now. And when you do that, you want to go to match content and you want to do match dynamic range and match match frame rate. The reason why you want to do that, if you if you turn this off, your your Apple TV is going to be quote unquote outputting Dolby Vision no matter what. And it's gonna look weird. So let me turn this off. And the picture's a little bit washed up because I have this light on. You know what? Hey Siri, turn off all the lights in Man Cave. Hey Siri, turn off all the lights in Man Cave. Understood. Request sent. Okay. So, it's going to be, if you leave those off, it's going to be outputting an HDR signal no matter what you watch, even if it's not HDR. Now you can't really tell, but my screen looks a little bit washed out. The colors look a little bit washed out because it's outputting HDR. And the, the, the standard frame rate or color spectrum for the Apple TV is 4K 60 SDR. So the home screen, what you're looking at right now, was made for 4K SDR. But because I have those settings turned off, it's outputting HDR no matter. So it's basically, it's forcing 
my Apple TV to display HDR even when it doesn't need to. So that's why you want to go to your settings and you want to do put that on and put that on. So what that's going to do is it's going to put the output normally at 4K SDR and then when you start watching something that has Dolby Vision it's going to automatically switch over to Dolby Vision and the frame rate so it's not going to look washed out. All right, so that's the Apple TV. And again, I can change this to, you know, something else. Number eight, let's go back to, uh, let's go to five. Okay, let's go to settings. And it's still set to 4K Dolby Vision. So as long as you, I think pretty much all of these work. Um, let me see. So this one, number two, this should be full Dolby Vision, not the low latency. Let me see what it does. So it's, it recognizes it. Switching to Dolby Vision will improve video quality. Apple TV will check your HDMI cable to make sure it's compatible. So let's try Dolby Vision. So the other ones are low latency Dolby Vision. It's not the full version of Dolby Vision. This preset is the full Dolby Vision, or it should be, but yep, so it can't do it. So I'm going to hit cancel on that and I'm going to go back to the low latency Dolby Vision. And that's because my projector can't handle the full bandwidth of Dolby Vision. That's why the low latency Dolby Vision is better. Again, you don't get the full 444, you may get 420 or 422. So it switched it back to the previous format. I'm still getting for uh, I'm still getting Dolby Vision. Now, if I go to, let's see, if I were to go to Disney Plus, and I go back to here, okay, so you see the tags, 4K Ultra HD, Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos, so I'm going to put this on mute. But I'm going to hit continue. And I'm going to skip back a little bit. Awesome TV show, by the way. Let me know in the comments if you guys watch The Mandalorian, what you guys think about it. Way better than the, than the movies. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my projector. I'm going to go into the settings of my projector and I can check also what I'm getting. So it's not going to tell me Dolby Vision on the projector, but if I go to info and go to projector info, so I'm getting 8-bit 420. So like I said, I'm not getting 444, I'm not getting the full color spectrum, so it's it's compressed, it's 420, but it's it's that compression, if you look it up, 420 and 422, it's basically a compression of the 444, but it's a an advanced compression that you're not supposed to lose a whole lot of detail. You can still get good colors. It just won't be the full color spectrum. So color format, BT2020 HDR. So you can check that too. And I'm getting 60 frames per second. Now, I don't know if that TV show is 60 frames per second. I, I think it is. But let's go to a movie. So let me back out of this. Let's go to Plex. Oops. So 
So let's go to Plex and let me find a movie that's 23 frames per second. Let's go to Ant-Man. So one thing I can do here is I can go to info and it'll tell me the incoming and the outcoming source. So this isn't right. And I don't know, I think it's the Apple TV, but it's supposed to be 23 frames per second. So as you can see here, the source in, it's saying that it's outputting at 4K60, 420, BT 2020 10-bit HDR. It's outputting 4K60, 420, BT 2020 8-bit HDR. So let me go back to my projector, hit menu, info, projector info. So 60 frames per second, 8-bit 420, BT 2020 HDR. Now, this movie, I know for a fact, is in 23 frames per second, or 24 SPS. 23.976 is the actual, but I think that's the that's not a reflection of the Diva. For some reason, the Apple TV is outputting at 60 hertz. So let me change let me change something here. So zero. Let's go to number eight. So let me go to info. So it's still outputting at 60 frames per second. So now let me go to the shield. Let me go to the NVIDIA shield. So I'm going to switch over to the shield. And let me refresh. So 4K60. So info. So that's, I'm on input two. So input two, I have custom nine. Mm, that's fine. Okay. So let me go to Plex. Let's go back to Ant-Man. Resume. And it's still 4K60. So I know that's not right. So let me play around with something here because let's see, input two. Info, refresh. Okay, so let me go to Scalar. Ah, that's why. I forgot that I changed that. So if you see here, the scaling, I have 1080p 60 to up upscale. Well, no, it should be, it should be, let's go here, oh, upscaling. Let me go back to info. Hmm. That's weird. It wasn't doing that before. It's supposed to be outputting at 23 frames per second. So let me go back to Epson projector. And 
and it's outputting at 60 frames per second. So I must have changed something, but before it was it was outputting at the frame rate that it was supposed to be outputting, and it would it would tell me that. So let me go to home and check the settings of the shield. So device preferences, display and sound, resolution, HDR10 ready, default. Okay. So let's say if I change it to 23.976. Okay. So I'm going to hit refresh. And now, so now it's saying it. But I must have changed something because it used to automatically switch over. So I'll have to play with that offline. But just know that it works and it will output what it's supposed to output. I think I must have changed the setting in here. I was messing with this the other day and I must have changed something. And now it's just forcing, you know, 4K60 if I have it set to that on the, the device. But let's go back to Plex. Okay, so refresh. So it's telling me 4K 23.976, 422, BT 1209, BT 709, 12 bit. So with 4K Ultra HD, 4K HDR, you're going to get the full um, color spectrum and the full 12 bit 422 because that my projector is capable of that. That's the standard for 4K Ultra HD. So let's go to the projector, go to the menu, info, and as you can see it's outputting at 23 or 24 frames per second, 12 bit 422 BD709 SDR. So let's go to a movie that is Ultra HD. Let's go to Aquaman. So we'll hit refresh, 4K23, 422BT2020, 12-bit HDR. We'll go to the projector, and now we're getting 12-bit 422BT2020 HDR. So before, remember, it said HDR. And it said, I think it said BT709. So it switched over. Now, let me see about. So we'll exit out of here. Now let's go to Gemini Man because Gemini Man was shot natively at 4K60. Now that one's not going to be 444 because my projector is not going to be able to output that much bandwidth. So let's go to Gemini Man. And if you haven't seen this in 4K60, it looks absolutely buttery smooth. I wish they would shoot all movies like this. There's, there's no lag. There's no jitteriness when they're panning. It's just it's just smooth. Okay, so refresh. Okay, so it seems if I have 
the Nvidia Shield set to 4K23, it'll switch over to 4K60. So I guess if I have it set to 4K60, it just automatically forces that because it switched over. So if you can see here on the Diva, what's incoming is 4K60, 422, BT2020, 12 bit HDR, and I'm getting 4K60, 420, BT2020, 8 bit HDR. So I'm not getting the full, I'm not even getting 422. It's 420, but it still looks, it still looks amazing. You probably won't notice that much of a difference. But again, let's go to the Epson projector and see what it says. It should match. So 8-bit 420 BT2020 HDR. So a direct match. So the HD Fury Diva, this is how you can get Dolby Vision. I have a projector Epson 5050, I'm sorry, Epson 5040, doesn't even have Dolby Vision, it's not Dolby Vision compatible. My Nvidia Shield normally is not Dolby Vision compatible. And that my Xbox and my Apple TV are compatible, but again, my it's it's being bottlenecked because my projector doesn't support it. But with the HD Fury Diva, now I can get Dolby Vision. It may not be the 444, but at least now that I can get it. It's it's I've had it for a couple months now. It looks amazing. And just the fact that I can get a different form of Dolby Vision on all of my devices is that's just game changer. So something else that I wanted to show you. So if I go to on-screen display. So this has an on-screen display that will show on your screen and you can set it to however many seconds you want to fade. I have it turned off. At least I thought I did. It says enabled. But it gets annoying after a while. You can set the seconds really low. But let's see. Um, let me set this for 60 seconds. Okay. Now let's see what happens. Let's check all these. So you see that it pops up on the screen. So let's go back in here. So you see that? I don't know if it's coming through, but it has the on-screen display there. So it's telling me 4K60, 422, BT2020, 12-bit HDR, and it's telling me the audio, bitstream, and some more information. So that gets really annoying for me after a while. And like I said, you can change how long that stays on the screen. So basically anytime your resolution changes, it's gonna do that. It'll go off after a while. I have it set to 60 seconds right now. But for me, it gets, it gets annoying. Even when I set it like all the way down to like five seconds, it'll only stay up there. It just got annoying and I know what it's outputting. And again, I can go back to info and look at what it's, what it's outputting or I can pull up my phone or I can pull up my projector. So I don't really need it, but if you like to see that there, then you know, you can, you can enable that. So see, it just went off after 60 seconds. So I left it on and I'm gonna uncheck all these stuff so it doesn't come up.
So that's pretty much the HD Fear Diva. Again, there's a lot of more tabs in here. I'm not going to go over that. I just want to show you if you get the HD Fury Diva, then it's that easy. It's almost plug and play. So my projector is plugged in straight into my receiver, my Anthem receiver, and then the my HD Fury Diva is plugged into one of the inputs on HDMI inputs on the back of my receiver, and then everything else is going into the Fury Diva. So my Xbox, my Apple TV, and my Nvidia Shield are plugged into the HD Fury Diva, and then the Diva has a switcher in it. So the Diva is plugged into the receiver, everything's plugged into the Diva, and the, the Diva switches the inputs. And it's compatible with Harmony, with the smart remote. So I can I program the HD Fury Diva into my remote, and then once I press, you know, Shield TV or Xbox or Apple TV or watch a movie, it switches all that stuff. So uh, I'm not going to really show you. I'm not going to turn it off. The the E did for the Nvidia Shield. You get the picture already. You know what to do. I'm going to leave it on 4K 23 because if I put it on 4K 60, it looks like it just forces that. So I need to look into why it's doing that on the Apple TV, but it works. You've seen it works hands on and it's an amazing device. Let me know in the comments if you're going to pick one up or if you're thinking about picking one up. If you do pick one up, let me know what, what you what you think of it and if you if you need any you know assistance or any help let me know in the comments you know i'll respond all right well i hope you guys enjoyed this video on the hd fury diva hopefully this helps you out and helps your decision if you want to get one to get dolby vision i have to say dolby vision really is the real deal i prefer it over hdr10 i haven't had experience with hdr10 plus that is supposed to be the direct competitor to dolby vision but I can tell you that even though I'm not getting the, the full bandwidth or, or the full color spectrum, I may not be getting 444 in some of my videos, it's still way better. And I have to say the Apple TV Dolby Vision is just, it's beautiful. So I'm really glad that I have it. It's a great little device. Uh, if, if you're thinking about getting it, let me know in the comments. Or if you have any questions, let me know that in the comments as well. All right, guys, until the next video, talk to you later.